In case you guys missed it, 2024 Tops Holiday is coming out November 8th. And on top of that, we have brand new formatting that will forever change the product on how we know it. And what have I told you? This might change the hobby forever. And I'm going to explain why in this video today. So what's going on, guys? It's Grip and Rip. And before we get into the video, let's plug the giveaway as usual. So at 10,000 subscribers, we're giving away hobby packs of the newest product available. All you got to do is be subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content you see on the channel. And last but not least, leave a comment in the comment section of this video and countless other videos on the channel on what has been your favorite moment this year in baseball. And I will pick the winner once we hit the goal of 2024, 10,000. That is right, 10,000. We're only about 250-ish, maybe less off. So let's get it done. Should be relatively soon. Probably giving away packs of update. Or, I mean, honestly, quite frankly, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to give away because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but there's like six different releases in October. So, yeah, um, I don't know what to think about that. But uh, my wallet certainly will be hurting in October. So, um, yeah, yikes. And even November. I mean, there's two. <laughs> so right now, before we really get into the meat and potatoes of the video, um, you know, there's actually two releases, actually technically three in one week. We have Alan and Ginter right now slated for October 30th, Stadium Club November 6th, and November 8th holiday. So... I don't know what Topps is thinking by releasing all these things at once, but uh, a lot of people's wallets are going to be hurting if they try to buy every single box of the new products. So either way, let's talk holidays. So if you guys missed yesterday's video, I highly encourage you to go watch it. I'm not going to regurgitate every single ounce of information I talked about yesterday, but we got some new formats um, if you guys didn't hear, we got tins. That is right, the tins that were discontinued. I think they were 2021 or 2020. Um, series 1 tins. They didn't do them for Series 2 or Update for some reason. I don't recall anyways. It was only Series 1 for whatever reason. But either way, they are coming back for Holiday. And we got the Monster Boxes, which are going to include one guaranteed hit. Um, the selling point on the tins is three Christmas parallels. So similar to what you get in Update or, you know, like the Halloween or the Easter parallels. Same thing. Same exact thing, except there'll be Christmas trees, elves, candy canes, probably Santa Clauses, Rudolphs, you name it, gifts, whatever, right? Anything Christmas, I guarantee you will beyond the card right so got me thinking today right because you know i like to critically think and that's really what this channel is about it's critical thinking right it's critical thinking and unbiased opinions that is, that's exactly what this channel basically is and i was thinking about this all day i, I said to myself for a product like holiday because let's be honest holiday is like you know a super niche or niche, I don't know how to pronounce the word, niche, I think, niche product, right? It's only really relevant for like a month and a half to two months, depending on when you find the product. This year, it's November 8th. It was supposed to come out in October, by the way. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Um, so yeah, it got delayed, actually. But, you know, Tops will never say that because they never announced it. But I can tell you that Holiday is actually delayed. It was supposed to come out sometime mid-October, but for whatever reason, they pushed it back to the first, technically, second week of, of November. Um, but it got me thinking. I said, why would they make new formats for 2024 Tops Holiday, a super niche product that's only really relevant for, like, six weeks max? Because after Christmas, I mean, sure, people will buy it after Christmas, but at the same time, they also take it off the shelves and not restock it ever again past Christmas. Very rarely. One year I saw it in January, but after that, I mean, it's gone, right? 
it's not like a series one, two, or an update that sits on the shelf for months on end. It's only out really for like a month and a half to two months max. And then it hit me. The answer to my own question, a light bulb moment, if you want to call it that, happened at this very moment. I said, you know what? You want to know the real reason why they made these tins? To test out something. What are they testing out? Whether or not these tins will sell. Because do you know what they're going to do if they do sell? Series 1 will have tins. If the tins for holiday sell. Now let me elaborate what I mean by that. So obviously, you know, like I said, doesn't really make much sense that they're making tins. Now, the print runs will be astronomical this year, I'm assuming. But what they are doing is they are basically testing out if tins will sell or not. So I assume if they do sell well, and I think that they will, um, depending on the players that they put on the tins, again, I'm not entirely sure who those players are going to be. I can imagine Otani's going to be one. I can imagine Aaron Judge is going to be one. I can imagine Paul Skeens is going to be one, probably. Um, and a couple other players, right? And like Tatis or whatever, right? Um, I think what they're going to do here is if they see the data of these sell, they are going to implement tins into the regular um like formatting and what's going to happen hear me out they might get rid of hanger boxes i hear me out i think if they can prove the tins sell let's be honest tins have 59 cards hanger boxes also have 59 cards now the price might be a little higher than a hanger box because of the tin itself, because obviously paper compared uh, compared to aluminum, right? So obviously it's going to cost a little bit more. But I think what they're going to try to do here is if they can prove that these are going to sell, because here's the thing. Guess when they start packaging Series 1? In January. Believe it or not, it only takes them about a month time or so to package all the product, believe it or not. It doesn't actually take as long as a time as you may think it does. So what they're going to do is they're going to see the data after Christmas and say, okay, these tins are selling. Or they might see the data beforehand because honestly, realistically, they're probably going to have to work on the packaging art for Series 1, figure out who's on the tins, and, and things like that, right? So what they're going to do is they're going to look at the raw data and they're going to say, well, these are selling. Let's do tins for Series 1. And if they sell for Series 1... Let's do them for Series 2, so on and so forth. If they sell for Series 2, let's do them for update, right? I think that is absolutely what is going on here. It's a test to see if they're going to sell. So that way, when Series 1 2025 hits stores late February, early March, you might have a new format, or they may take away a hanger box format to substitute it for a tin. I don't know if they'll take them away per se, but again, I mean, if they want to print Series 1 to the moon or not, I don't know. I I really don't know. Um, series 1 should be pretty decent, but that's aside the point. We'll get there when we get there with Series 1. We are way, 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 way too far away yet for Series 1, uh, but we do know who is going to be in the product, like, you know, Jacob Wilson and uh, Dylan Cruz, James Wood, Brooks Lee, you know, those th those four guys really are going to sell the product. But I have another point I want to make with the Christmas-themed parallels. I find it really interesting that they are putting these Christmas-themed parallels in these tins. Typically, you see those type of parallels in blaster boxes. And this is the big point I want to make in the video. I also believe this. What I think is going to happen is I think they are going to take the holiday themed parallels out of blasters, put them in tins, and guess what they are going to do? 
they're either going to put commemorative relics back in blasters or give us game used bat or jersey relics in blasters next year. Look at Donruss Baseball, for example. Donruss Baseball, one autograph or mem in every single blaster box this year. And to be honest, it kind of made Tops look bad in an essence because if an unlicensed product can pull that off with 90 cards, by the way, sure, I get it unlicensed compared to licensed. I get it. They got to, you know, entice the people to buy it. I get it. But if an unlicensed product like Don Rush can pull it off, why can't Tops do that? And I think they saw that this year. And they said, well, it might be time to go back to the drawing board with these blaster boxes. So what I think they're going to do is they're going to take the Easter-themed cards, the Halloween-themed cards, and the 4th of July-themed cards. They're going to take them out of blasters. They're going to put them in another format. I don't know what format that might be. It might be hanger boxes, for all I know. I don't know. Or it could be tins. Who's to say they don't do that? I don't know. Like I said, I think the tins are a test for Series 1. But let's say they don't use the tin idea for Series 1. They could probably, realistically, put the holiday parallels in hanger boxes or fat packs or whatever product you want to try to entice the consumer to buy. And they're going to put something else in the blasters. Because I'll tell you one thing. I will tell you this right now. A lot of people I know personally and even the card store guy who runs my local card shop. I'll tell you this. He sells blasters. And he doesn't sell a lot of them. He does not sell a lot of blasters. And he, I asked him, like this is like about a month ago or so. I asked him, why do you think that is? And it's funny because the price is the literally exact same. He sells it for retail price. So, you know, it's not like no increased price or anything. He said because he thinks that the holiday parallels are not drawing interest in blasters. And I fully agree with that statement. Because realistically, I mean, if you want per se a Paul Skeen's pumpkin parallel or a Halloween whatever parallel, all you got to do is go to eBay. Like, I am not going to waste my money because blasters are, like, literally one of the worst formats, aside from the fat packs, you could buy with any product. Like, Series 1, 2, Update, whatever, right? Blasters are typically one of the worst products statistically, right? And the holiday cards are really not drawing any interest to buy the product. I I'm telling you, they're not. As a matter of fact, I will tell you this right now. I have bought less blasters than I ever have in my entire life over the last year. Ever since last year's update, when they took out the commemorative relics and put the holiday cards in there, the Halloween cards, I have really not bought a lot of blasters this year, except for like Chrome, Platinum Chrome, and Bowman and things like that. But when it comes to Series 1, 2, and Update, I have... I mean, you see a Series 1 blaster right here. That is literally the only blaster box, aside from the Fanatics exclusive one that I bought all year. I did not buy a Series 2 blaster, and I'm probably... May, well, maybe I might buy an Update blaster just to have on the back here to switch up the background. But other than that, I have really not bought in blasters, and my friends personally have not bought them either when it comes to those types of, of releases. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to switch up blaster boxes to potentially give us a little more value. And it's funny, they call them a value box. They don't even call them blaster boxes no more. They call them value boxes. And it's funny because there's, in my opinion, there's really not a lot of value in, in value boxes, which is kind of funny. Um, so I think what they're going to do is they're going to take out the Halloween cards and put something else in there to try to b uh, boost sales. And honestly, I like the idea of that. Now, if they don't do that, then I, I truly don't know. But the fact of the matter is this. Since they are making these tins with these holiday cards, that tells me this is an absolute test to see if they will sell. And I do think they will sell. Do not get me wrong. I do think 
These tins will sell well. Now, again, there you have to compare them to the Monster Box. I don't know the prices yet. I do not know the prices of Monster Boxes and tins. Tins are probably going to be like $15 or so, and the Monsters are probably going to be $30, $29.99. I think that's what they were last year. Uh, makes sense. I mean, I, I could be wrong on that, but it makes sense at least. Um, I personally would just buy the Monsters. I mean, if you're going to buy multiple tins, I will buy probably a couple tins, maybe one or two, maybe one to put like in the corner where this O'Neill Cruz bobblehead is for Christmas or things like that. But um, like, for example, if they do make a Paul Skeens tin, I will definitely buy it because obviously that's like, the, that's my guy. That's my guy who I collect. I collect him and Andrew McCutcheon. Typically, as you can see, the two custom cards, by the way, and, and O'Neill Cruz, I kind of, collect him as well but um either way i would still buy the monsters but if you do have a favorite player like skeens or otani or ellie de la cruz they might do or like mike trout i would buy a 10 sure um so i don't know leave it up to you or what are you gonna buy i'm gonna do a free poll in the comments free poll time are you gonna buy monster boxes or are you gonna buy tins because realistically when it comes to the tins i mean you know you could just probably buy your favorite player in the christmas themed parallel like you know i i keep on saying paul Skeens because that's who i'm gonna go chase after obviously because that's you know who i pc him and kutch really like i just said but um i'm probably just gonna go on ebay and type in 2024 tops holiday Paul Skeen's whatever parallel. And if it's on eBay, which they will be, I'll just buy it there. Um, so there's really no point to buy tins unless you have a favorite player, but, you know, on the tin itself. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. There's It's definitely an interesting debate. Um, I don't know. The price, obviously, depends on that as well, that, that argument. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But either way, guys, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. So if you want tins to stick around, I will say this. This is the last thing I'll say. If you want tins to stick around, I would buy as many as you can if you want them to stick around to show tops and fanatics that they sell. But if not, you know, you speak with your money, you let your wallet talk for you. So I don't know. If you want them to stick around, buy a couple. If not, buy monsters. I, I mean, that's pretty much the extent of that. So either way, that's all I got for you. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video today. So before we head on out of here, we're going to open a pack of Pro Debut. But before we do, let me tell you about today's sponsor of the video. So this video today is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the official ticket market of Major League Baseball. And we have partnered up to deliver huge savings for you guys who watch my videos. So click the link down below. Download the app today. Use my promo code GRIP and RIP. That is promo code GRIP and RIP at checkout to save. $20 off of your first purchase. Again, that is promo code GRIP and RIP at checkout to save $20 off your first purchase. Again, code only works if you've never bought through SeatGeek before. So here we go, man. We only have two packs left. This pack and then, and then the uh, other pack after this. So looks like I kind of have to refill on my cards. Um, I do have some packs of score a treat left, which it is about to be October. So it wouldn't hurt to open them. So, oh, look what we got here, man. Look what we got here. We got an orange parallel. Look at that. Is it a chrome parallel? Let me see. I think it is. We might have a... Looks like we have an orange chrome parallel. It would be pretty nice for that to be autographed. I don't know if it will be or not, but it would be nice to see a autograph, an orange chrome autograph. So we will go from the back here to... Oh, I missed a card, I think. I think I missed a card. Yep, I did. So we will see here. I don't think it's autographed. I don't see... I don't see, like, any, like, white to prove that it is. Um, but let's see here. I've got to move my tripod out just a tad. Let's see what we got. All right. Let's see who it is. Please be Paul Skeens. That'd be pretty cool, right? Oh, okay. Well, Judd Fabian. That is definitely a name I 
No. Pretty cool color match to an extent. Out of 25, not bad. Um, oh, look at that big smudge. Look at that big smudge right through his face. You see that? Oh, man. You see that right there? I'm trying to zoom. I'm trying to... You see that? Like on the helmet right there? See that big smudge? Right where the light is? Oh, man, that's bad. Oh, oh man, that is bad. Holy God. Well, congrats, Tops. I mean, I wasn't gonna... I wasn't gonna send this to grading, but... Jeez, I mean, <laughs> if you're a fan of Judd Fabian, um, yeah, that is that is bad. Holy mother of God. I don't know if you can really see that or not too well. Look at that, right there. Right down his helmet and his neck. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. Oh, well. I mean, I wasn't going to grade it anyways. I mean, I just, this is not really gradable, obviously. 5 of 25, though, is a nice little hit. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll still top load it or whatever. But, yeah, so there is our Chrome Parallel. I was looking for a Chrome Parallel. I got a Chrome Parallel. Orange Speckle Judd Fabian from the Bay Sox, but unfortunately has a big smudge on his face, and I don't know if I'll be able to get that out or not. But uh, either way, pretty cool hit nonetheless. So either way, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.